one of the things I've heard you say is that sleep is your superpower. And you gave an example of, and I think everyone can relate to this, that sleep is like clicking the save button on the things that you've learned that day, which is why it's so important to do after you're studying or after you're learning. But it also can prime your brain for learning. So, I mean, it's important in both stages, but I think everybody who's gone through school, college, whatever, law school understands, if you manage to get that eight hours in after you've done your cramming or your reading, you know it's so much better the next morning versus having to pull an all-nighter. And that evidence is now so powerful and so well replicated that when it comes to your learning and memory abilities, sleep is actually critical in three um, unique ways. First, we need sleep before learning to get your brain ready to initially lay down those new memories. In other words, sleep almost uh, prepares your brain like a dry sponge ready to initially soak up those new pieces of information. And without sleep, the memory circuits of the brain effectively become waterlogged and you can't absorb new memories. And we did a study, for example, where we asked, is pulling the all-nighter a wise idea? And first, what we found was that the memory centers in the brain were shut down by a lack of sleep. And they were just bouncing that information, almost like a full inbox in your email. Mm. Um, The second uh, thing that we learned, however, was that you not only need sleep before learning to get those memories into the brain initially, just as you said, you then need sleep after learning to um, cement and solidify those new memories into the brain. And in fact, during sleep, it's a very active process, by the way, we transfer memories from that short-term vulnerable reservoir to a more permanent long-term storage site. And that's the process of saving them, as you said, almost like hitting the save button on those memories. Hmm. But then more recently, we've discovered that sleep is much more intelligent than we ever imagined possible. That sleep not only saves individual pieces of memories, but sleep will intelligently start to associate and integrate that new information together. And it's, you know, I, I liken it to informational alchemy. It's that you wake up the next morning and you have a revised mind wide web of associations. Definitely. And that's the reason that, you know, I'm sure you've probably experienced this and people listening may have, that you can come up with solutions to previously impenetrable problems. And I think it's the reason that no one has probably ever told you, Megan, that you should stay awake on a problem. (laughs) (laughs) They don't. Instead, they tell you to sleep on a problem. And that's exactly what the evidence is telling us. Now, this may be outside of your area of expertise, but when you say that it, it can actually sleep, sleep can help move the memory to a more long term storage part of your brain. Do you know whether that place has got all the memories in it that that all the memories are potentially accessible? You know, if only the hardware would work the way w- we wish it would. It's it's a very challenging question in memory science. And we do I do a lot of work in this area you know, how much information is actually stored in the human brain and how much capacity do we have for storage of information? We don't have the answer yet, but I think what we've learned is a surprising fact that we probably have a lot more information stored in our brain than we, than we ourselves are consciously aware of. And you gave a lovely analogy, and I think it's, it's absolutely correct. There are some times when someone asks you a question, you say, you know, I just, I can't remember. I, No, it's gone. And then all of a sudden you get a little bit of a cue that you look at something, a label on a bottle, and all of a sudden it unlocks the memory and it comes flooding back. And what that tells us is something fundamental, that the information was in your brain, it was available, but it wasn't accessible. And sometimes we make the mistake that a lack of accessibility reflects the fact that the memory is not there. That's perhaps not true. The memory is there. It's available. It's just not accessible. It's almost as though sometimes we lose the IP address to that memory and we can't go and find it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there was a lovely study done several years ago that demonstrated once again, a role for sleep here, that sleep increases your 
the veracity of which you can locate and identify and access those memories. So you could have that information stored within the brain, but you just can't recall it during the exam if you haven't had enough sleep. Wow. I mean, I feel like everyone's had that experience and you you know it's in there. You just have to you have to get the keys somehow, close your eyes, <laughs> like get better rested, don't drink. You know, there are all sorts of things you can do, but it's fascinating. And I, I love those stories where you hear about somebody who gets hit on the head and then they go in for the operation or stuff, whatever, and suddenly they can play piano again, which they could, hadn't mm. been able to do since they were four. You know, unlocking the mystery of our brains is is fun science. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.